Okay, so five minus two, is five bigger than two? Yes. Yes, so you can just straight subtract, okay? But, but now we have a problem. Four is not bigger than six. No. So we have to borrow, we have to borrow from the nine. So the nine goes to eight and you put a one on top of the four representing 14. Okay, so what is 14 minus six? Eight. Eight, good. And then is eight, now we're looking at the eight and that's why you cross out the nine. We're looking at the eight. Eight minus four. Four. It's four. And then if there's no digit present, if there's no digit present, what do we assume is there? Zero. Zero, yeah. Okay, so let me have you try one on your own. Let's go. Um, 182.3 minus 55.1. Like you to try that on your own, please. Okay, I got my final answer. Okay, what is your final answer? 125.2. All right, so what's interesting is I can actually check your answer by adding the second number to it. So watch this, we're gonna add these. So that's your answer is on the top and then the second number is on the bottom. So three, Five and five makes 10. So I'll put a zero down here, carry of one. One plus two plus five is eight. And then bring down the one. Is this the same as this answer? No. No. So something went wrong. So let's look at it together. And it probably has to do with a carry, but um, it takes a while. It takes a while to get this where you're really comfortable with it. Okay, let's go through this. Three minus one is two. Can you take two and subtract five from it? No. No. So you have to borrow from the eight to make it seven and put a one there. What is 12 minus five? Um, eight? Nope, 12 minus five. Think of 12 is like 10 plus two minus five. So maybe, maybe like 10 minus five is easier. Five. Five plus the two? Seven. Seven, there you go, good. Okay, and then going back to our problem on the left here, seven, seven minus the five, because it's no longer eight, because we crossed it out. What is seven minus five? Two. Two, bring the one down, okay. Do you see your mistake on your paper? Yes. Okay. I'm gonna give you another problem to try here. Let's go uh, 98.4, subtract 29.2. Go ahead and try that one on your own, please.
Okay, got my final answer. All right, give me uh, just a moment here. Okay, what is your final answer? 69.2. Okay, so what I'm gonna do is take the second number, put it below it and add. So you'll you'll see that addition and subtraction, they're, they're kind of opposites of each other, okay? So let's add these, two plus two on the right, two plus two is four, nine plus nine is 18. So there's a carry of one. One plus six plus two is nine. You got it. Excellent. All right. Okay, so let's look at uh, kind of a different problem. Um, let me paste this in here and we'll look at it together. Uh, so it says to subtract 78 minus 4.2. Where is the decimal? And I'm asking you. Uh, Zoe, where is the decimal in 78? Decimal. Do you see a decimal? We can start with that. Uh, no. No, but there is, there's one right there. It's just not written. Yes. Okay. But like you wouldn't write it if you don't need it, but um, we are going to need it when we subtract. And here's why. When we put 4.2 on the bottom, do you see how there's nothing in this position to the right of the decimal? Yeah. Do you remember what goes there? Zero. A zero. Okay. Okay. So when you subtract, when you subtract, you're going to have to borrow. Okay, so, you, so you, you're going to borrow from the 8. The 8 goes to a 7. And then a 1 goes above the 0. 10. 10. So now it's 10 minus 2. 8. 8. 7 minus 4 is? 3. 3. Okay. And then 7 minus, what's, what's underneath the 7? Nothing. Nothing. So you can consider that zero. So that becomes seven. seven. Okay. Now, just like I mentioned before, you can actually add, mm -hmm. you can add the second number to it. So I'd like you to do that. I'd like you to come over off to the side. I'd like you to add these two numbers together. Should I do this one on my own? Yes. Just go ahead and add them up and you should get 78. Let me know if you get that. I got it. Okay. What is your answer? 78.0. Good. Excellent. Okay. So let's try another one here. Let's say we want to subtract 19 minus 4.5. So again, 19 goes on top, the first number goes on top, and 4.5 goes on the bottom. But what you have to do, this is really important, is you have to put 19.0. You have to add that zero. And you're not really adding it, but you're putting it, it uh, on the position. Yeah. Okay. So now, can you subtract a zero, a zero bigger than the five? No. No, so you, you cannot you cannot subtract. You have to borrow from the nine. What does the nine go down to? Eight. Eight. Okay. So ten minus five is five. Five. Eight minus four is four. Four. And then what goes down down here next to the four? One. One. And again, this is this is actually what's called a check. So you're going to take that 14.5, that number you just found, and add it to 4.5. So go ahead and try that.
I got my answer. Okay, what is your answer? 28.0. Okay, uh, so, so five plus five is 10, right? There's a zero there. Where did you put the carry? I put the carry on top of the four. Okay, so that's what you've got to add it with. One plus four plus four. Oh, so that's nine. So that's nine, yeah. And then what comes down next to the nine? One. Perfect, well done. Okay, let's have you try one on your own here. I'm gonna leave up the work, but uh, I want you to try this. Uh, yeah, let's try that one, that'll be okay. Okay, go ahead and try that one, please, uh, on your own. I got my final answer. Okay, what's your final answer? 20.3. 20.3. So my check is to put that 6.7 underneath, add it. Three plus seven is zero. Put a, I'm sorry, it's 10, but, but it's, it's zero with a carry of one. One plus zero plus six is seven. And then bring down the two. And yeah, that's the same as that. Now, not every problem in math can be checked, but many of them can and, and should be. And it really, it really will help if, uh, if, if you do that. So let me uh, go to 10.5, lesson 10.5 now, and see what, what is coming up. Um, seems like you're getting a really good handle on subtraction. I know, I know in your homework sets, they're doing some estimation and they're using some blocks and things like that. Yeah. Um, that's not how you're going to do it long term. Mm -hmm. So I'm I'm um, not sure why. Okay, well this is odd. It says multiplying and dividing by seventy is getting ready. Huh. I don't understand. Okay. Oh, I see. That's a it's a practice thing. All right, so let's let's do another problem here. It's kind of the same deal. I mean, it's kind of the same thing. It said it says to subtract three point two minus one point one four. Okay, so when we write the numbers vertically, three point two, and then one point one four, what you should notice right away is that there's a there's a missing there's a missing space missing number in this box up here. What do you think goes in that box? Zero. Zero. So generally, generally, if there's a you know an empty box, you can just put a zero in. Okay. Um, so why don't you try this one on your own? I think you actually know enough to be able to do this. Okay. Okay, I got my final answer. Okay, what is your final answer? 2.06. Okay, so again, my check, 2.06 plus the 1.14. Okay, so six plus four on the right there, that's 10. So I put a zero here with a carry of one. One plus zero plus one is two, looking good. Two plus one is three. Are these the same? Yes. Yes. And that's how you know. That's how you know for sure. Now the check is almost as much work as the as the steps to do it. But uh, we'll see here. So let me let me have you try one on your own here. Maybe try uh, subtract four point three minus uh, two point three no, let's go 3.17. Go ahead and try that on your own, please.
Got my final answer. Okay, what is your final answer? 2.13. 2.13. So let's add that to 2.17. This is your check. Okay, so 3 plus 7 is 10. So that's 0 with a carry of 1. 1 plus 1 plus 1 is 3. And then 2 plus 2 is 4. So that works. Okay. Uh, do you get an allowance or have you uh, earned any money lately for any jobs or anything like that? Because I'm going to, we're going to talk about an application. Um, well, we haven't done it, but my dad has gave us money for if we clean his car. Cool. Cool. Okay. Um, and have you bought anything at the store recently, like for yourself, whether it be a toy or, or, or a game or anything? It's okay. I was just, I can make up something, but sometimes it's better if, if the example is, you know, more towards whatever you guys uh, are doing. I mean, yeah, I would buy it for my dog. Okay. So, so let's say, let's say you have a savings account right now. Okay. And I, we don't have to talk about that. Let's just say in your savings account because of interest is $51 and 92 cents. Okay. And you want to buy a dog toy. How much do dog toys cost? Uh, like $4. Okay. So let, let's say it's it, with taxes and everything it ends up being a, five dollars and 37 cents and like you said you're you, you cleaned a car yes and so you you earn how much do you earn for cleaning a car um around 20 around 20 so let's let's just say it let's just say it's 20 dollars. but you find some change in your dad's car and he says hey you go ahead and keep it and you find 75 cents in there okay all right so we're going to estimate Okay, and we're gonna round to the nearest dollar. Okay, so when you look at this first number, 51.92, what does that round to? When you round to the nearest dollar? 51.92. So here's the dollar right there. The dollar is the ones position. Oh yeah, the one. That's the dollar. So what, what does that round to? Look at that nine and tell me what that rounds to. Um, up. Up. So what does that one go to? Down. No, no, it's, it's, it's rounding up. You just told me, you said rounds up. So this rounds to $52. Oh. Do, you see, do you see how the one has to go up to two because of the nine? Mm-hmm. Okay. How about, let's look at the next one. If you round $20 and 75 cents up to the nearest dollar, okay, mm -hmm. you're going to, that zero is either going to go up or, or stay the same. That seven, does that cause it to round up or down? Up. Up. So what does two, what does the zero go to if you round up? One. Goes to 21. Yes. Okay. Now, again, in the ones position, what, what number is in the ones position for the dog toy? Five. 5.37, yeah. So when you look at that, when you look at that, does the three cause you to round up? No. Yeah, it, it, that's right. It rounds down to just $5, okay? Okay. So now you're adding the 21. Why are you adding the 21 in this scenario? What, what does the 21 response refer to? Clean the car. Clean the car. So you got that. that like that's, that's for you. Yeah. Okay. But now you're spending the five. Mm -hmm. So that's why we subtract it. All right. So let's do this. What is 52 plus 21? Can you do that for me? Can you add these two numbers together? Okay. Okay, um, 73. 73, and now I want you to subtract the five. Okay. 
68. So you, you, if you were estimating, you would say, I'll have about $68 at the end of this. Okay. Yeah. And, and if you do, if you work out the math exactly, it's $67 and 30 cents. Is this a good estimate? Yes. Yeah, I agree. I think it is. That it is. Okay. So that is it for us for today, Zoe. Um, you can let your brother know that I'm ready for him. Um, but thank you very much for letting me help you, and I'll see you on Wednesday. Thank you for helping me. You're welcome. Bye now. Hey, Michael, how are you today? Michael, let me know when you can hear me. Matthew, um, hey, Mike. I can find Michael really quick. Um, sure. I think he's downstairs. Sure, I will stand by. Thank you. Hello. Hey, Michael, how are you today? Good. So, Michael, I think we're going to work on division today. Does that sound right to you? Division? Yes. Awesome. Uh, okay, so, go ahead. I have class right now. Uh, what, what do you mean by that? You have class right now? I have school right now. I'm doing my class right now. Are you talking to me, Michael, or someone else? I'm talking to you. OK. Uh, well, we, uh, we have our lesson now. Are you, um, is, is there, is this a, are we going to do the lesson? Yes. OK. So let's do some division problems, okay? Now, we've talked about some problems like this, like 16 divided by four. Do you remember what the result is of 16 divided by four? Yes. What is that? Four. It's four. And, and the reason is, is that four, this four times the missing number equals 16. So we can do other problems like, what is 21 divided by seven? And what that really is saying is seven times some number is 21. What number is that? What is 21 divided by seven, Michael? Excuse me? What is 21 divided by seven? Three. Three. It sounds like there might be a little bit of background noise. Are you uh, are you getting some audio from another source or? Um... It's my school. Okay, got it. So let's continue here. Let's let's uh, let's keep looking at this. Um, so so another way to do division, and we're going to do it uh, we're going to do it very carefully here, is we're going to look at 
how many times does two go into 48, okay? Two, so this is, so really this is 48 divided by two. So two goes what's considered outside the house and the 48 goes inside the house. So the first number, the first number always goes inside the house. The second number goes outside the house. Have you seen, have you seen this before, Michael? No. No. So this is totally new for you. Well, that's okay. We're going to work through some examples and we'll see if we can get you, get you caught up here on some learning. Okay. How many times does the, does the two, the two go into four? How many times? does two go into four? Or in other words, what is four divided by two? Four divided by two is two. Good, okay. How many times does two go into eight? Four. Four. Eight divided by two is four. Yeah. So that four goes there. Good. Okay. So let's try another one here. Let's say I want you to do 36 divided by three. Okay. And 36 divided by three. So which number, which number goes inside the house? Do you remember which number goes inside here? 36. 36. And then the three goes on the outside of the house. I don't know if it looks like a house to you. That's just the way it's been described for years. Okay. So you look at that first number and you ask yourself, Michael, you say, well, how many times does three go into three? Three. How many times does three go into three? And in other words, we're taking three and dividing it by three. Uh, we're dividing it by itself. One? One, yeah, one time, one time, okay? Now you ask yourself, how many times does three go into six? Or in other three. words, six divided by three. Three. Nope, try again. Six Two. divided by three. Two. Two. Okay, so are you getting this down in your notes? Go ahead and uh, take some time here to get this written down and then we'll proceed after after you're ready. Yeah, done. Okay, so let's try another one. Let's say we want to do um, where, where, where do we want to go next? Um, okay, let's go uh, 88 divided by four. 88 divided by four. So what number, Michael, goes inside the house and what number goes outside the house? So 88 goes in the house. That's right. And four goes out the house. Okay, that's right. So the, you know what I'm going to ask you? It's how many times, how many times does eight go in, how many times does four go into eight? Four. Two times, eight divided by four. Well, 
What is eight divided by four? Uh, eight divided by oh, four is two. It's two. Okay. Okay, and then the same thing here. Eight divided by four. What is eight divided by four? Two. Two. Okay, so see how the two goes there? So let's try another one. Let's say I want you to do 639 divided by three. What number goes inside the house? What number goes outside the house? So, so 639 goes inside the house. Okay. And three goes outside. Okay. I want you to try this on your own. Okay. How are you doing on this one, Michael? Good. Okay. Let me know when you have the have an answer. Um, I'm looking for what goes up above the six and the three and the nine. So two hundred one three. Two hundred and thirteen. Perfect. Two hundred and thirteen. Okay. Okay, so Michael, have you ever had a pizza party and had some pizza left over? No. Never? You've never had leftover pizza after a pizza party? No. It always gets eaten? Oh, come on. You're kidding, right? Okay. Um, all right. So let's look at this. Let's say we want to do uh, nine divided by two. Okay. Two goes outside the house and nine goes inside the house. Give me just a moment. Okay, so Michael, what is two times one? Two. What is two times two? Four. And what is two times three? Six. 
And what is two times four? Three. And two times five? Ten. Okay. Which two numbers does nine fall between? Uh, ten. It's between eight, eight and ten, right? Yeah. So do you see that four is the smaller number between four and five? Yeah. So we're going to put a four up above here. Okay. Now watch this. We're going to multiply the four and the two. What is four times two? Eight. And now we're going to subtract. Nine minus eight is? One. One. This one represents the remainder. OK. So the remainder in this problem is one. So I was the reason I was asking about the pizza is almost every pizza party I've ever been to, there's always some leftovers. And you can think of the remainder as the leftovers. Okay. So let's try another problem here. Uh, actually, uh, did you get this down? Because this, uh, this is important to take down it for notes. Yes. OK, you got it all down? Yes. OK, so let's do another problem here. Let's do seven divided by three. So what goes inside the house and what goes outside the house? So three, no, I mean seven goes inside the house and then three goes outside the house. Right. And do, and do you see that three does not go perfectly into seven? Yes. Yeah, it, it's, it doesn't go perfectly. It's between six and the nine. Do you see that? Yeah. So we choose the smaller number. The smaller number is six. Okay, three times two, two gets you to six. Okay, so we're, we're actually grabbing this number here, not the six. What is three times two, Michael? Six. That goes down here below and then you subtract. What is left over? What is the remainder? One. One, so this is called the remainder. Let me know when you get this down, please. Done. Great. OK, so let's look at another problem here. Let's say it's 9 divided by 5. OK, so the 5. The five goes outside the house and the nine goes inside the house. And off, over here on the right, five times one is five and five times two is 10. Do you see that the nine is between five and 10? Yes. So do we put a one or a two up above the nine? Two. But that's too big. We want to choose the smaller number. Yeah. So we put a one up above here, one up above here, because it's the smaller number. You always choose the smaller number. Choose the smaller number. What is one times five? Five. Okay. So you subtract. What is nine minus five? Five. No. Nope. <laughs> nine minus five. five. Four. Good. So this time four is the remainder, okay? So the remainder is not always one, it's, it's whatever's left over. Sometimes you have four slices of pizza left over. Okay. Okay, so let's look at another one here. Let's go with uh, uh, nine divided by four this time. Nine divided by four, okay? So notice the four goes inside the house and the nine goes outside the house. All 
right? And you've noticed every time I've written out four times one is four, four times two is eight, four times three is 12. And then I'm, I'm boxing these numbers. What number does nine fall between? Uh, eight. Between eight and 12. And we always choose the smaller, choose the smaller. So we choose the eight. So which number do we want to use? Two. Two. So two goes up here. Two times four is? Eight. Eight. Put the eight below the nine. Subtract. And what is left over? Uh, nine minus eight. One. One. This is your remainder. Okay, so I'm gonna have you try one on your own now. You've got this down in your notes, hopefully. Yes. Okay, so let's, let's have you try this one. What is seven divided by two? I want you to try that one on your own, please. So is it three? It's three, but what is the remainder? What is the remainder? Three. No. Did you put the two outside the box and the seven inside the box? Yeah. Okay, so three goes up here. What is three times two? Six. And when you subtract, what do you get? What is seven minus six? <clears throat> One. Yeah, so that's your remainder. It's three with a remainder of one. All right, good job, Michael. We'll, we'll just do some more on Wednesday. This is new for use, but we'll get it down and um, make sure that you understand it. So thanks for letting me help you and I'll see you in a couple of days. Yeah, see you too. Okay, bye now.